Recently, we raved about the best unlockable bonuses in video games that were worth the hassle it took to acquire them. If you're unsure what an unlockable bonus is, it's what we now call DLC and get charged $15 for. Back in the olden days of the past, though, these cool extras would be awarded to you for free if you could best the obstacles that the game put in your way. Sometimes they weren't worth all the hard work, but other times they so, so were. Here are seven more of our favorites inspired by your comments on the original video. Enjoy! Oh, this is the price you pay for betraying me, boy! Betraying you? I was never working with you! They say villains have a lot more fun, and there aren't many villains who look like they're having more fun than Spider-Man's nemesis, the Green Goblin. <laughs> what a happy fellow. While Spider-Man is indisputably one of the coolest superheroes out there, it's hard not to look at the Goblin with his cool glider and feel a twinge of jealousy as you laboriously crawl up yet another skyscraper in search of a mission objective. But finish 2002's Spider-Man the movie The Game, and you didn't have to feel jealous anymore, because the game let you play through the whole thing again as old Greeny himself. Not Norman Osborn's Green Goblin, of course, he's already discovered the downside of gliders in the main game. You guys wait and do that somewhere that isn't directly over a fresh corpse? No? Okay. Anyway, in this mode, you're playing as Harry Osborn's Green Goblin, who is a whole new character and who plays completely differently to Spidey, thanks to his pumpkin bombs, razor bats that will automatically fight enemies for you, and of course, his signature glider. I can't believe I'm doing this. Some dad's goblin gear is just nuts. Yes, you have to finish the game on Hero Difficulty, which is no easy feat, but it is fully worth it for a brand new, super fun character with his own unique abilities, who can get around New York even more easily than Spider-Man himself. Most of the time. Hey, you try flying this thing with a pocket full of exploding pumpkins. Honestly, new level of respect for Willem Dafoe. Destroy All Humans, or to pronounce it properly, DESTROY ALL HUMANS, cast you as an alien invader tasked with flying down to Earth to zap humans, steal their brains, and occasionally chuck cows around with telekinesis for fun. The game had a real 1950s campy B-movie feel to it, with the flying saucers, ray guns, and little green men. I am not green. Alright, alright, little grey men. The point is, it was heavily influenced by 1950s B-movies, which is why it was great that when you finished the game you unlocked exactly that, a 1959 sci-fi B-movie called Teenagers from Outer Space. This masterpiece of 1950s cinema didn't feature any actual teenagers, but did include such hallmarks of the genre as saucer men. Before the High Court has you executed, you should be made to watch what happens when we return here with the Gargans. Fights with giant lobsters. And terrible, terrible dialogue. You make me angry, but I like you very much. In short, it was a perfect accompaniment to the tongue-in-cheek sci-fi weirdness of Destroy All Humans. And though Destroy All Humans doesn't feature any giant lobsters, it does have you fight a giant robot controlled by the president's disembodied brain. If elected, I promise to destroy all furons! Maybe an idea for teenagers from outer space too. This is the original Gadgetron vendor from Ratchet & Clank 1. The official reason it was cut had something to do with saving memory. The real reason has a lot to do with squirrels, hacksaws, and our lawyers. I can say no more, because I am no longer able to do this accent. Going to a museum might not be everyone's idea of a fun Saturday, but when that museum is the Insomniac Museum from the Ratchet & Clank series, it's a different story. Starting with the one in Ratchet & Clank Going Commando, these museums are unlocked in a variety of different time-consuming ways, from achieving 100% game completion to going to a specific place between 3 and 4 in the morning. Hi, welcome to the Insomniac Museum. Here you'll see some of the great things that never quite made it into the game, and you'll learn a little bit about life here at Insomniac Games. But once unlocked, these are a veritable treasure trove of cool ephemera for fans of the games, including concept art, cut weapons, pictures of the developer's dogs, and even playable prototypes of features that were eventually cut from the game, like the turbo slider races from Ratchet & Clank 3. 
You could also watch cutscenes and commercials for the game from around the world, such as this endearingly baffling effort from Japan. <laughs> Well, I don't know about you, but I certainly am more likely to buy Ratchet & Clank now that I've seen them blow up that kid's love letter. Ruining Japanese children's lives aside, though, Ratchet & Clank should be commended for this excellent unlockable that gives its most loyal fans an insight into the development process and a chance to see some of the features that didn't make it into the games. And yes, that commercial got a part two. Amazing. <laughs> I have no idea, but one thing's for sure, whatever's going on down there, it's not business as usual in this town. Willamette, Colorado is the location of the zombie-infested mall in the original Dead Rising game and has a population of 53,594. Dead Rising has an achievement called Zombie Genocider that you unlock when you kill 53,594 zombies. That is not a coincidence. Frank, you better really hope they don't find a cure for this zombifying disease. I've covered wars, you know. Yeah, and killed about the same amount of people. Anyway, although the achievement you get for this horrifying act of undead genocide is nice, the real treat is the unlockable weapon you also get once you check the security room after finishing the game. The weapon is called the Real Mega Buster and bears a striking resemblance to the arm cannon favoured by Frank's fellow Capcom character Mega Man. That said, we don't remember Mega Man's version having quite such a gory effect on his enemies back in the NES days. Maybe it's just harder to tell with the 8-bit graphics. The real Mega Buster is great fun to use, comes loaded with 300 shots, and makes every enemy in the game a breeze, leaving you free to concentrate on the important things in Dead Rising, like dressing up in stupid outfits. Yeah. I'm sure those 53,594 people understand. Red Faction Armageddon is a game that is all about destruction. As such, you'd expect it to give you some pretty impressive weaponry to accomplish all that destruction. And you'd be right, from the humble sledgehammer... Two high explosives, to a gun that literally fires singularities. There's plenty to keep even the most carnage keen building smasher happy. One weapon, however, stands above all others in its destructive power. I am, of course, referring to Mr. Toots, a rainbow farting unicorn. You heard. Unlocked first by the Red Faction Armageddon demo being downloaded one million times and then by you finishing the game, Mr. Toots is a small unicorn with stomach problems. Luckily for you, in the Red Faction universe, unicorn farts are so powerful they can sweep through buildings like a hot knife through butter and vaporize enemies before they can even draw breath to scream. Also, they look like rainbows! <coughs> Let's just hope they smell like rainbows too, because otherwise, even if you do save Mars, no one is going to want to stand near you, Mason. You are right? I'm fine! Just leave me alone! Ashley, wait! <laughs> We did include Resident Evil 4 on the previous version of this list, but many of you were outraged that we didn't include what many consider the finest unlockable of all time, a way to stop Ashley Graham being constantly kidnapped by bad guys. Anyone who has played Resi 4 will know that your job in the game is to protect the president's daughter, and that that president's daughter's default state is being kidnapped by a crazy villager or deranged cultist. Leon! Yeah, you'd be hearing that a lot. Thankfully, completing the unlockable we mentioned in the last video, Ada Wong's campaign Separate Ways, gave you access to a new costume for Ashley. This was a suit of medieval plate armor that made her invulnerable to all damage and, crucially, too heavy to pick up. 
Voila! Kidnap proof Ashley. Being able to forget about Ashley and just play the game without having to stash her in a bin every 30 seconds is a real treat, and really allows Leon the time he needs to indulge his hobbies, such as 1920s gangster cosplay. Loud and clear. Somehow I thought you'd be a little older. I feel like you're not taking this mission seriously, Leon. You are a gifted man, Edward. Has a strange look. Is it worth something? Nothing you can spend. But if you find all of them, it'll lead to something grand. Something like 70% of being a pirate is how cool your outfit is, so it's no surprise that Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag protagonist Edward Kenway has some pretty impressive gear. Uncork this man's breakfast! <laughs> Probably the most impressive outfit that Edward can wear, however, is the armor that you unlock by completing the Mayan Stellae puzzles, which you'll remember as being incredibly tedious puzzles where you rotate lines around. You know, classic pirate stuff. Stop having thrilling adventures on the high seas for long enough to complete all 16 of the puzzles, and you'll gather all the items you need to unlock the Mayan armor hidden in Tulum, a city on the coast of Mexico. Sure, it's not much to look at, but this armor harnesses the awesome power of magnets to deflect any bullet fired at Kenway, making you basically unkillable. I mean, unless a whale gets you. It's weakening! Hey, hey, the hey. Also, we couldn't end this section without a shout out to another great black flag unlockable known as Deceased Crew, a cheat that you only unlock after completing 100 Abstergo challenges. I don't think the term skeleton crew is meant to be taken literally, black flag. Drink and the devil had done for the rest. Those are some of the most worthwhile video game unlockables that we've ever seen, but if we've still missed off your favorites, drop them in the comments below and be sure to like and subscribe and turn on notifications for more videos like this from outside Xbox every week. Thanks for watching.